Hi guys, so today what we're going to do is use Spring Boot to auto configure our ActiveMQ connection factory, which is actually going to be a pullable connection factory. We're then going to wire that connection factory into a JMS Transaction Manager. We're also going to wire the connection factory into our JMS Camel component. So then we're going to create some Camel routes that are going to read off the JMS queue or topic. We're then going to create a transacted session where we're going to then send it downstream to multiple queues. So I hope you enjoy the ActiveMQ auto configuration, which is in Spring Boot 1.4.0, M2 or M3. I'll soon, soon find that out. And I hope you enjoy um, the Camel code. Hi guys, so let's get started here. So go ahead and create a new Spring Starter project. I'm using Spring STS here. And we're going to create a project called Contract JMS Adapter. So go next. And what we want is Apache Camel. So that's going to allow us to write some routes that we're going to read off JMS queues, perform some logic, and send to some other endpoints, which in this case are also going to be JMS queues. We also want the JMS active MQ configuration, and we want the web dependency. And we're going to use Spring Point 1.4.0. So click next. Bring down the, the Spring Bit Starter. So this is going to go out to Spring Initializer, bring our dependencies down, import it into our project which is our ID of choice, which is Spring Tool Suite. So go ahead and delete the boilerplate code, do a Maven update and your project's ready to go. You should see here there's one class contract JMS adapter application, which is our main entry point to your application. So go ahead and open Maven dependencies, open up Spring Boot Auto Configure and scroll down to the package jms.activemq. So if you open up that package, you should see a JMS connection factory configuration class. And this is our auto configuration. So let's let's look at this class. So if you open up the class, you'll see if we have the property spring.activemq.pull and the name of the property, so spring.activemq.pull.enabled is set to false, then we're going to create a standard ActiveMQ connection factory with our ActiveMQ properties. And if it's set to true, what we're going to do is create a pooled JMS connection factory, which is what we want to do in this case. We want to have a pool of connections. And we're also going to pass in our uh, ActiveMQ properties. So if you open up ActiveMQ properties, you'll see that they're under spring.activemq.brokerurl.inmemory.username, password, and etc. So this is different than the spring uh, 1.3.5. So if you, if you go ahead and open up that dependency, you'll notice that the, the likes of pool is not there. So this is really nice of spring 1.4.0. So let's go ahead and actually start configuring this. So what we need to do is go ahead and uh, go into our spring dot, our application property file. And one thing I also should have mentioned is you must have the spring.activemqpool.configuration property set. Because it's again, it's at configuration properties. So let's go ahead and open up our um, Spring application properties and let's create a spring.activemq broker. So we want spring.activemq.broker, broker URL. And what we're going to do is say TCP. We're going to call it to uh, a server I'm going to be running. It's going to be localhost. And typically it's port 616161. We also want spring.activemq.pool dot enabled equals true so now we're going to have a pullable connection factory and we also want spring dot active mq dot pull dot configuration dot we're going to call it, mm, we're going to give it max connections so max connections equals 10. So let's look at some of the other properties pull dot configuration so as you can see here, there's lots of different properties you can set. So the timeout, a reconnect on exception, connection factory, block of session pool. So now we have the ability to set all these properties. So they're automatically going to be created and injected in to our auto configured uh, pillable connection factory. So now if we save that, we can now start actually writing some spring code. So if you go ahead and right click and create class, and we're going to create this in package.config. 
So we're going to call this uh, JMS config. And it's going to be configuration thing. So what we're going to want to create first is a JMS transaction manager. So we're going to enable transactions within Camel and Spring. And what we need here is a connection factory. So as you remember here, this is auto, auto configure our connection factory. What we want to do here is go ahead and copy the connection factory class. And we're going to inject that, which is going to automatically be auto wired for us into our uh, beam configuration. So as you can see, um, connection factory is now being imported. So JMS connection factory. And you're going to want to head, want to go ahead and create a JMS transaction manager. So new JMS transaction manager. And we're going to set the connection factory. So set connection factory to the connection factory that we just created. And we're going to return JMS transaction manager. And of course, what we want to do then again is create a JMS component with Camel. So public JMS component. Great JMS component. So this is going to be our camel component that's allow going to allow us to read off our queues. And of course, what we want is the connection factory injected in there as well. So again, we, we don't actually have the import here. So what we're going to need to do go ahead is go into our palm and manually import the camel JMS package. So if you go into your palm, you're going to want to copy this dependency. So this is one that was automatically brought down for us. Go to org.apache.camel, camel, and we're going to call camel JMS. So save that. Update, maybe an update. Go back into your JMS configuration, control shift O, bring in your JMS camel component. So now what we want to do is actually create a camel component. So JMS component. Um, we want to actually use the JMS component dot JMS component transacted. This is going to give us a transacted session and we're going to pass in our connection factory. And we also want to pass in the JMS transaction manager. So we're going to need to auto wire this transaction manager and in, also into this bean. So now we have a transacted JMS component. We want to go ahead and we're going to set the maximum uh, concurrent consumers. Set max concurrent consumers. So that's how many consumers are going to be reading off the queue at any one time in any instance of our application. So we're going to return that. Um, we're going to use a property. So we're going to use the value maximum uh, concurrent consumers. So you want to go ahead and import that in. Final JMS component. Let me just JMS transaction manager. I Typo there. Control Shift O, Control Shift F, format that and save. So now we have a active MQ connection factory which is pulled. We have a JMS transaction manager that will manage our connections. And we're creating a JMS camel component, which is the camel JMS component. So it's going to allow us to read of JMS queues. And we're injecting in the connection factory. So it knows where to pull connections. And it also knows that which transaction manager we're using. And the JMS component is now transacted. So if you go in here, it's going to set the template that transacted equals true. So now we're ready to go. So let's actually go ahead and set our maximum, uh, max concurrent consumer property first. Just before we forget, so we're going to want, say, two maximum consumers. And what we want to do now is actually go ahead and start writing our camel write. So if you go ahead, new class contract.writes, and we're going to call this JMS write. And what we want to do is extend the super class so it will be a write builder. And click finish. 
So now we're ready to go to start writing our routes, but because we're using Spring Boot, it's going to auto configure and auto scan our um, application packages. So if we annotate our route with add component, it'll automatically instantiate this component within the camel context, which again is automatically configured. So go ahead now, let's actually start writing our camel route. So we're going to say from, and the endpoint we want to use is we're going to use a property. So Spring Boot's going to these query braces, it's automatically going to convert this to our system properties. So we're going to say inbound queue, or actually we'll just call it endpoint because we don't want to even tell it. it's, it's queue, it's JMS. And then what we're going to say is transacted. And because we've instantiated the JMS transaction manager within our configuration, well, that's actually a platform transaction manager. So if you open that up, when it downloads the sources, so if I scroll down, link transaction platform transaction manager extends abstract platform transaction manager, which will again extend platform transaction manager. Sorry, implements platform transaction manager, and that's what Spring is going to look. So Spring Camel and Spring are automatically going to look and see which beans, um, which beans are there, and which of them are an instance of platform transaction manager. And if you only have one platform transaction manager within your context, it's automatically going to use that one. So Spring will automatically know that we want to use a transacted session with that JMS transaction manager in this instance. If we had two, we would need to create a primary bean and define which one. So let's go back to our route. So we know it's transacted. And what we're going to do here is have a log message. So we're going to say login level. Dot, and we're going to give it just info in this case. We'll create a log. I'm going to say received message. So go ahead and bring in um, a log. So you can actually use the default log in the right builder, but I'm going to bring in my own um, log for this because I'm going to use a static inner class just for this example. And then we're going to create a processor. And let's use an anonymous processor. Um, what we're going to say is log dot info and we're going to say exchange so this is the camel exchange object and we're going to print out the exchange and after the processor we're going to want to go ahead and create a loop so this is going to allow us to send multiple times to send the same message multiple times to endpoints and what it needs is a simple expression so we're going to give it the amount of times we want to loop so again, this is going to be converted to properties. So we're going to say outbound.loop.count. And then we're going to say two. So this is where we're going to send the message to. Outbound.endpoint. And we want to just fire in another log. So in this case, we're going to say login level.info log we're going to say message sent and then we're going to print out the iteration number so iteration and come will allow us to use a property that's going to be set in the exchange that's on the loop and it's called camel loop index so hopefully i have no typos anywhere if i do have any i'm going to go back and change them once the compilation errors are and again, we'll just press end. So save that, remove any unneeded imports, and we should be ready to go. So now let's go ahead and actually create these properties. So inbound endpoint, and we need uh, outbound loop.count. And we also need an outbound endpoint. So save that, go ahead and open up your active MQ console. So this is mine saved from earlier. So what I'm going to have to do is actually go up and start active MQ. So if you locate to wherever you've installed active MQ, or maybe you want to use um, embedded broker, but in this case, I'm not. So I'm going to go into Apache, which is my installation. I'm going to CD Apache active MQ. I'm going to see the bin and then I'm going to start active MQ. So that's going to head and start a local active MQ instance for me. I can then go back to my localhost queues. I'm going to refresh that page as the instance should now be running as it is. 
and I have pre-created a queue called inbound.d. So that's our inbound endpoint, and our outbound endpoint is outbound.d. So go ahead and save that. I'm going to um, go ahead and run this application. I see if I have any errors, and because I'm using TCP, it's going to automatically know to go out to the server and look for the connections. So if you right click, run as Spring Boot up. Let's see if everything's configured right. Nope. Spring Boot, no such bean definition. No coffee bean of .jms connection factory. At least one satisfied bean. Okay, so let's go back to our properties and see what's missing. So it needs a spring.activemq.pool.enabled pulled connection factories. Oh, so I don't think that exists. No, it doesn't exist. So we're going to go out and we're going to need a pulled connection factory. So because we don't have the pullable connection factory on our class path, we're going to we're going to need to go ahead and go into our palm and we're going to need to import the Apache um, ActiveMQ pool. So we'll go to palm and let's bring another dependency in. So dependency. And then we're going to say group ID, and it's going to be org.apache.activemq. And the artifact ID is going to be activemq. And we want the pool. And if you save that, it might want us to give it a version. But since our versions are going to be managed, because activemq is under Spring Boot Palm, it's going to bring in 15.3.8. Three, I believe. So now if we go back to our ActiveMQ connection factory, go into that class, we now have a pillable connection factory. And if we sync that up, you'll see it's 15.13.3. So yeah, the right one. So let's go ahead and rerun our application. Run as Spring Boot up. Hopefully that's going to work this time. New endpoint satisfied for inbound.endpoint. Go to your properties. Inbound.endpoint. Of course it's wrong because we also need our JMS um, common component to be in front. So this, this is the benefit of live coding for you guys. Is you know you learn as you go, you don't get things right first time. You know, you have to have to build a little bit, run it, build a little bit, run it, go fix things and, and see how you get there. Okay, so now we have it ready. So we're processing in six seconds. So could not refresh JMS connection for destination inbound D. So there's nothing wrong, it cannot connect to JMS. Look at who's 61, 61, 61. It's not 61, 61, 61. It's 61, 61, 6. So save that. Run us. Spring bit up. Let's see if it bits up. Started JMS adapter application, six seconds, and now it is successfully pulling on the queue. So what we want to do now is go ahead and load up your ActiveMQ web console. Let's go ahead and look at the inbound D. So no messages on the queue, and we're going to want to send to the queue. So we're going to send a message saying, hello. Oh. And we're going to send one message to inbound.d. So let's send that. And there you go. In our actual application, we have received the message. There's the exchange. And the message is sent 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, four times to our outbound queue. So if you go ahead and open up the outbound queue, you'll see that if we refresh the page, it's now 5. So that's how easy it is to use um, Spring Boot uh, ActiveMQ auto configuration to auto configure your active MQ connection factory and then what we did is grab that connection factory and injected that into a spring and uh, enabled some camel so we could automatically create a route that's going to read off the MQ, do some processing and send it on to a different MQ. So I hope you found that example and I hope you try Spring Boot, spring, um, active MQ and camel out in uh, your applications as uh, I hope you find it as fun as, as I find it. So. Uh, Thanks for checking this out and be sure to subscribe to get other great content and great material like this. So see you next time. Bye.